Hello guys, here we are at Code Rage 11. Today we're going to talk about Arduino plus mobile apps. Uh, well, you will choose between Delphi or C++ Builder and today we're going to go all through the basics and a little bit beyond the basics on how to integrate these apps with Arduino and control everything Arduino has to give to you via your app. Well, this presentation was originally done at ITDevCon in Italy last October and uh, my name is Victor Fernandes, I'm Embarcadero MVP in Brazil, I'm also an electrical engineer with a master's degree in medicine neuroscience working as a CTO at TKSsoftware.com. Well, I live in Salvador, Bahia, which is a very nice place to live and to be at. So let me tell you a little bit of my personal life. When I was at the university, I was very young, around 19 years old. I once visited a hydroelectric plant and I was very impressed about the size of the structures and uh, how the engineers were able to control everything from the main control room. On that day, I asked the guy, okay, if I want if I want to open the gate and make the water flow, what should I do from here? And he said, okay, I just need a couple of clicks. And with nothing more than three or four clicks, he told me, okay, from now on, if I want to go further, I have to type a password and things will actually happen outside. And from that day, I decided what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to develop software that could make things happen outside my computer. Not only network applications, database application forms and so on. I wanted to control things, to read sensors, to actually uh, make things happen in the real world from a click of a mouse. So a good approach is to try to look at things and make them look simpler. If we consider those big gates, okay, it's very hard to understand right now all the electronics involved in opening or closing them. But we may consider something simpler. We may consider like, for example, a lamp in your room or office. Do I have all the knowledge involved to light up a lamp from the application? Well, I do know how to do software like in Delphi or C++ for my mobile or computer, but am I able to light up this lamp? In most cases, you will most probably say, no, I don't. So we can think even simpler. Okay, I don't want to light up a lamp. Can I light up a LED? If we consider the electronics, we have different level of electronics involved in each of these three cases. But if we consider the logic, the logic is absolutely the same. The light is going to be on and off. The gate is going to be open or closed. So from the application logic, we can control these things with the very same click of a button. So if I'm able to control them from my application, I may only need some electronics to jump from one level to the other. So let's start from the simple point of a LED and then we may at some point get to the big gates. So at the ITDevCon event, I had the opportunity to ask the guys who here has ever worked with my controllers before? And some people raised their hands and I was able to talk to them and uh, understand how they have worked with my controllers and what kind of applications they have developed. So here I want to give you guys two examples of my real life uh, usage for my controllers, okay? First one is my master degree work. We developed a portable medical electrical equipment where we were able to track Parkinson's disease tremor. So the idea here was to have a embed board with a accelerometer sensor attached to it and we would have a software tracking the tremor and presenting the results in a graphic uh, screen like this. And here we can see X, Y, and Z axis. So the tremor is clearly going up 
at some point the patient may take his uh, medicine and the tremor starts to go down and stays like this for let's say three hours and at say, some point it starts to go up. With a graphic like this, a doctor can actually uh, work on better results for the treatment and track on results and stuff like that. So, uh, another example is this production tracking system we once found we once found in a factory floor application. So here we had three lamps, green, yellow, and red, for each of the production lines. So he could uh, check on production line results and see that this production line was working in a not very good uh, uh, status. Yellow status for them was not very good, red was a problem, green was okay. But the problem is that they had no database of historical information for the production tracking system. They had to actually look and be physically present on this room to check on the status of the production. So the idea here was to attach a box with some electronics and track these uh, signals now storing everything on a database and presenting the very same status you see here yellow yellow the very same status on a TV and now we could have TVs all around the factory with the very same information and we had this implementation done with a toast interweb so we could actually see the very same information on a device running on Wi-Fi or internet if they have their firewall program. Now we also had SMS to uh, set up alarms and stuff like that. So this is how we could use electronics in the real world and make some uh, very simple but useful things integrating let's say Arduino or any kind of microcontroller with your software development. If you're new to this microcontroller world I suggest you consider Arduino as a starting point. Please check www.arduino.cc and www.arduino.org website and consider the Arduino Uno as your starting point. This is by far the cheapest and easiest board to start with microcontrollers programming nowadays. Well, Arduino has a very interesting and power concept which is called shields. Let's understand a little bit what is the shield concept. I want to make a car tracking system. In this case, I would use a GPS shield on top of the Arduino Uno board. And uh, I would upload a software to my Arduino Uno board that would go something like this. Okay, every one minute, you should request the GPS coordinates to the GPS shield and uh, you should try to send these coordinates via a standard GSM mobile network. Of course, I would need a GSM uh, shield on top of my GPS shield. And after you try to send this message, if the server does not reply to you saying, okay, I got your request, I got your coordinates, and uh, you should try to store these coordinates on a SD card with an additional uh, SD shield on top of the two shields we already have. So we just go plugging shield on top of shield and uh, we could use Hot Studio, Delphi or C++ Builder to develop our sub. The thing is, we are very good on this side, the Delphi or C++ Builder application development, but we are not very good in all the electronics involved to do all this GPS, GSM, SD card communication. Now I have someone that developed uh, shields for each application that I can just plug them together as I may need. So at the end, we used here in our company the Atos Interweb solution to develop a real-time vehicle tracking system running on top 
of a browser, in this case here Mozilla Firefox, and everything works perfectly. So this is how you guys may be looking right now, okay? <laughs> Just a little fun. So where do I get to know about Shields? Please check on www.shieldlist.org and uh, when you open the website, you see a list of manufacturers. Let's take, for example, the Spark Fund manufacturer. Spark Fund is an American company, very good uh, in shields. They have here like 24 shields available. And if I click on Spark Fund, I'll see that they have GPS, microSD, and GSM shields available. So they do have everything I need. In one point, I can go there buy the shields I need or just click for some more information. But let's say I don't uh, want to buy Spark Fund or I don't know previously that they do have all these three things, I can just use the search box to type G GPS, GSM, uh, SD card and look for manufacturers that have these kind of shields and also compare the shields prices and so on. So this is a very powerful website that uh, you will find a lot of information in some very useful shoots. So let's take a look of what kind of shoots I'm talking about. So let's say you need to work with video applications. You can use, for example, Gameduino with VGA output and stereo audio, so you can connect on your TV and actually make your own video game. We also have, for example, boards with NTSC and PAL support. And if you are developing your own video game, you may need joysticks, right? <laughs> so here we have the very same joysticks we can find on PlayStation and so on. And they are very simple to use two buttons, four buttons, you'll choose what you need. Let's say you need sound support, then you have boards for MP3, you have boards for stereo to voice applications. If you need a display, you can count on very simple seven segments display uh, boards, or you can have like more uh, detailed 16 characters, two lines of information like this one, or even colored LCDs with third support and so on. If you want to control motors, you can count on H breeds, simple ones for one ampere, two ampere, and many others. If you want to connect on a network, you can use Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi using this kind of shields. And this is the one we're going to use here. Uh, we're going to communicate our mobile app via Wi-Fi with a hub or with uh, some kind of uh, router that goes on uh, cabling to our uh, Arduino. So we're going to use this guy here uh, to control the Arduino. And here we have like storage shoots with micro SD, SD cards and many others. If you want to go into automation, you can use Canvas to communicate on factory uh, networks or even use relays to uh, control 220 volts of alternate current very easy or even uh, other kind of networks like ZigBee, Z-Wave, and many others. If you don't find the shield you need, okay, no problem. You can use like protoboard shields to make yourself uh, the shield, uh, the, the, the electronics you need, or even standard boards like this one. So uh, at the end, if you don't find what you need, you can build it yourself and you can even sell your own boards as components in the shieldlist.org website. Okay, check on yourself now, okay? <laughs> so uh, if you start with the Arduino Uno concept, you'll see that it's not a very small board. So no problem, you can go now for Arduino Mini, Arduino Micro, Arduino Nano, which has the very same software support. I mean, the very same software you program for the Arduino Uno board, then you can use 
uh, with just some variants on number of pins and stuff like that in smaller boards. And then you can now go for smaller projects, okay? Well, uh, there's another very nice advantage is the use of Arduino LilyPad for wearable projects. Now you can do amazing things like this t-shirt here, <laughs> which is very funny. It shows you how many unread emails you have in your mailbox, okay? Just for fun, but then you can work with like more functional uh, applications. So let's do a first Hello World application with our mic controller using our Arduino board. So most mic controllers, they will not have a formal way to know if the software that you uploaded to it is running or not. So how can I know if my software, my first software, is actually running in the board? So this is how we usually do our first real Hello World. So uh, here I have a connected a LED in the pin 9 all the way through the pin ground. So what happens is that if I have an application running that will say, okay, pin 9, please go to logic level high or logic level 1, then a 5 volts voltage will appear between pin 9 and the ground and the, the LED is going to uh, turn on. If my software says, okay, now P9, you have to go to logic level number zero or low, this uh, five voltage uh, will go off, then we'll have zero volts here between these two pins and the LED is going to go off. So this is how our first Hello World is done. And uh, we usually will work with uh, proto boards uh, some piece of wire to put things together like this and this is how it looks like in the real-world application Okay, very simple components you can find in uh, Any website or electronic store very close to you So let's take a look at our first Arduino C code most uh, my controllers are programmed in assembler or C and in the case of Arduino we have a specific compiler which supports C and uh, well here we can go into file examples basics blink here we have many examples and uh, if we check on the blink example we will see that we have a setup function this is the very first function that is executed every time you run your uh, program you uh, power up your board and uh, in the very first line, we have P mode, LED built-in output. Okay, I will just change this LED built-in for P9, and I can say P mode, number of the P9 is an output. So we have several pins that can work as input and output, and in this case, I'm setting up P9 as an output because I have attached a LED to the P9, remember? Now, uh, we have then a void loop. The void loop is an infinite loop that runs until you power off your board. And in this case, we're going to do a digital write. So we're going to write a digital value into a certain pin. In this case, I'm going to use pin 9. Okay. And I'm going to set high in the pin 9. Then I will wait 1000 milliseconds. So I'm going to wait one second, actually, with the P9 in level high. After that, I will write a digital value into the P9 again of low. And I will wait one second again, and then the loop goes on. So here I have a blink example that goes on and off for one second in each level. Okay? Well, uh, remember this. LED butane. Okay, we will come back to this uh, constant later. Very easy. This is our first program. If you upload this program to your Arduino board and you use this circuit here, you'll see the LED going on and off. Well, uh, now I'm going to give you a very nice suggestion. 
is for you to use the Hobocore Padawan board, which is a board that comes with a RGB LED, okay? We also have potentiometers, we have light sensors, temperature sensors, we have a display here, we have a output that we can connect other things here, so it's a very nice board. And uh, in this case, when I traveled to Italy, I wanted to show a LED, but I did not want to use a circuit like this because I went from Brazil to Italy and this is not something that we can trust. So I used this RGB LED system from this Hobocore Padawan board in Italy. And uh, there is another version that I want to introduce to you guys and we're going to use uh, this board, this kind of boards in our demos today is the DF robot board. We also have a RGB LED here, but we have sound, we have relays, joysticks, and some of the things that we are going to investigate later. Okay, we have the links here so you can check on it later. Uh, well, you remember I told you that we would uh, go back in the built-in LED constant from the Arduino we have just done here. We had like P9, we had LED built-in here. So when I refer to this constant, I'm actually referring to this LED on pin 13 that comes in the Arduino board itself. So you can work with that in case you want to just test or give some uh, status from your application, okay? So the idea now is to have a Android or iOS application that is able to send commands on any kind of network. In this case, we're going to use Wi-Fi and Ethernet cable network to an Arduino board and uh, is able to actually control all the input and output pins from this board. Uh, the idea here is to upload a software that behaves as a UDP server and runs on a certain IP address and port, you will be able to change this as you want, and is able to check on messages. So let's say your application here on the mobile device sends the letter 8 for, let's say, high level, level high, level 1. We want the, left, the LED to go on. And if it sends the character L for low, logic level zero, we want the LED to go off. So this is how we are going to establish our first control protocol from scratch on Arduino. And to do that, we're going to check again on the Arduino board and let me open here, file, examples, ethernet, UDP, send, receive string. So this is the software, the C code that's going to be compiled and uploaded to your Arduino in order to uh, do what we want to, process the 8 and L characters. So the original code that comes in Arduino enables you to change the IP address to whatever number you want for your network and change the UDP server port, okay? After that, we have a setup that configures the uh, Ethernet shield board and uh, this application here actually behaves as an echo application. So whatever you receive, so you receive a packet, it stores the packet size, if packet size is bigger than zero then it checks, it prints for you the packet size itself and from whom the packet came from and uh, we can like send back the same buffer received, we can send back to the sender. So if they send A, the application on Arduino replies A. If it sends B, it replies B. Very simple code. The idea is to start from this code and make some few changes so it can work as we want to. So what we're going to do, we're going to check on this example and on the setup, uh, a part of our application, I want you guys to add this line of code, P mode 9 output. So we are configuring the pin number 9 as an output. Remember, we put a LED on pin number 9. So after that, we're going to check on packet buffer character number 0. So if the character number 0 is a 
H letter, we're going to send digital write message to pin 9, establishing the pin as high level. If it's not a equal to 8, we're going to test if it's equal to L. So if the L character arrives, we're going to set pin 9 to low logic level. With this couple of lines of code, so we have four lines here plus one here, so five lines of code, we are able to actually compile and upload a software to Arduino that now responds to strings H and L so it can actually control the pin number 9 remotely from any mobile device application that can be uh, developed as a UDP client. So all we have to do now is compile that application, upload to Arduino, and then we have to develop the client side which will be made in Delphi or C++ Builder. Little jump now, I have here my C++ Builder open, file new. We're going to select multi-device application. We're going to select blank application right here. Now we're going to make our FireMonkey application and it's going to be a UDP client. So I'm going to select the ID UDP client. Then first of all, we have to configure in the host property the very same IP address we configured in the Arduino board and also the port number. And now we will only add two buttons, button one and button two. And this is going to be the on button. This is going to be the off button. And this guy over here, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to call ID UDP client 1. So you remember that C++ is case sensitive. And uh, we are going to send the string 8. Let me copy this here. And we're going to send the L stop blinking for the off button. And the very nice thing is that we are running C++ and this is a FireMonkey application so I can actually try and validate and test this application either under Mac OS, so here I'm running it, running it on the Mac OS. You see here the Mac OS buttons. I can click on and off, and it will send the message to the server on my network. Or I can select Windows 32 bits. And uh, well, I can validate my application before I even upload it to my phone, iOS, or Android because it's going to be the very same uh, UDP client component, the very same message to be sent. Well, uh, let me show you now. I want to show you my environment here in the mirror of my iPhone. So I have here my environment. You see we have here the... Okay, just for a second. Oh. stopped for a second okay we have here my environment sorry for that it's, it's kind of tricky trying to show you everything here so this is a wireless router I have a cable here you see it's connected to my Arduino shield I have my Arduino down here I have my Ethernet shield here and on top of it I have my Padawan board so I have my iPhone here you can see that's my daughter you can see the mirror on the screen. I am connected via Wi-Fi with the router. And uh, if you check here on top, 
you'll see I have a RGB LED project. I'll click on it. It's the very same thing, but now I have a better interface and three colors for you guys. And uh, okay, here's the RGB LED. It's supposed to light up here. And uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm trying to show everything at the same time. Uh, okay, here I have the blue. I'm going to click on the blue. Okay, the blue goes on, blue goes off. Now I'm going to click on the red. You see that? Red. Now I'm going to click on the green. You see? So I'm clicking on checkboxes and uh, things are happening in the board. So this is the, the good part. I mean, we actually used not more than five lines of code in the Arduino side and now we used only one component in the C++ uh, builder side with two lines of code and uh, we have this uh, beautiful LED demo app working fine. And you may now be feeling like ninjas, right? I mean, we are doing few things on the Arduino side and few things on our mobile device and things are getting together very quickly, very easy. So, but at this point, we are only controlling LEDs. I mean, the LED is expecting 5 volts of direct current. The Arduino outputs 5 volts of direct current. So it's quite easy to put things together and uh, make things happen. But we need and we want to control lamps, remember? And those lamps are expecting 110 to 120 volts of alternate current. The thing is, okay, the logic's the same. I can use the very same uh, C++ software we just demonstrated, but we need to go a little bit deeper in the electronics. So let's see how the magic is done. Let's take as an example, this is standard light switch example. So in our office or home, we have a light switch in the wall and we have to use our finger to mechanically press the button. When we press the button, the circuit is closed and if the circuit is closed, the current can go all the way from the power source through the lamp and then the lamp goes on. The thing is, I need some kind of device that makes it possible to close this circuit without the need to use my finger. I need to mechanically, not mechanically close the circuit, but electronically close it via software or via my Arduino application. So how can we do that? We can use relays. These are simple relays and they have coils inside of it. If you study a little bit of electronics, you know that if we have a coil and we apply some voltage, it is going to be a current. And when the current shows up inside a coil, there is a magnetic field that shows. So if we have a magnetic field, it's going to attract this switch here from this point to this point. So if I apply a low voltage, let's say 5 volts, 12 volts of direct current in this side, I'm going to bring this switch from here to here. And if this voltage goes off, the switch will come back from here to here. So it's going to move electronically without the need to use your finger. The good part is that between this side these terminals on this side, we can apply higher voltages of alternate current. So we can actually light up a lamp using a very small relay like this one. So we can use relay modules such as this one from Hovercore or this one from the F robot. They're all Arduino compatible, very cheap. And we can connect them to our needle using a simple circuit like this one. We just plug the power source in this pin here and the ground source here. And we need an additional pin to control the state of the lamp on or off. So our software running the Arduino board is going to send uh, commands of high and low logic state to pin 13. It's going to control the state of the switch inside the relay 
to turn on and off the lamp. And in this case, we need, of course, the power source and the lamp to be connected to our model. So let's see a simple application running in our mobile. Uh, now let me show you the mirror. Here I have my cell phone and uh, let me open my camera. Here I have my camera. Uh, let's go back to my module here on my table. Sorry, it's a little bit difficult to put everything together. And uh, if you check here, it's my daughter. Uh, I have this lamp example. I'm going to open it. And uh, the only reason that I have a different application from the LED is that now I have a different interface that I can, let me show you here, that I can click on my cell phone and the lamp goes on. I can click again and the lamp goes off. So I have a different interface. I wanted it to be uh, something better for you guys to see the results. Okay, but it's exactly the same, the very same command lines that I sent to light up the LED. I'm just sending eight for level high or L for level low, and the LED is going on and off, and now the lamp with the use of the relay is going on and off. So, very simple way, and now you're feeling like ninjas. Let me show you a real life application for this. So this is me, and this is the main door for my office. Whenever I get to my office front door, I am already connected to the Wi-Fi on my mobile device. So I just use this very simple application here to unlock the main door. It's the very same code I just demonstrated to you guys that is able to light up the lamp. Because the lamp is on or off here, I just send a pulse and the door unlocks. So, if with a very simple code, few lines of code, we are already making useful things. I suggested you guys to work with the HoboCore Paddle 1 board. This is the one I'm using here, the one I demonstrated to you guys. We have already played with the RGB LED, and uh, I actually connected the relay module to this general pin connector here. But I also have a light sensor, I have a temperature sensor, and a display and a potentiometer here. You can also work with DF Robot accessory board that comes with pressure humidity sensor, a buzzer, a LCD display, a joystick, the same RGB LED I have in the other board, a potentiometer, and a relay. In this case, you can light up your lamp directly from here. The idea of these boards is that they come with many different things that makes it possible for you to start from scratch and uh, have a small lab on your hands before you start to go a little bit further in the electronics. Okay, but until now our protocol can only control like one pin. We did like five lines of code in the original uh, C Arduino code and uh, well we could only do things with one pin or two let's say it's not possible to control all the pins but we want to be ninjas right so it's time to go a little bit deeper into the arduino code and make a better code that is actually able to control all the pins outputs and inputs of the arduino so what I suggest to you guys is the following. Let's say I want to control the pin number four and send a digital write message uh, of uh, a value high. So we suggested a string protocol. Digital write, zero four is the pin, H is the value I want to send to pin four. Digital read, if you want to read a digital value, in what pin? Pin two and it will reply to you if the state of pin 2 is 0 or 1, low or high. If you want to use analog pins, you can do analog write 0, 3, so I'm doing analog write, analog write on pin 0, 3, and uh, I'm going to write the value 255. 
So analog write commands in Arduino work with bytes. So I'm writing here a full byte of ones. Or I can do like, for example, analog reads on pin 2. So this is the idea of the string we are suggesting. If your application on the client side sends to the board this kind of strings, you can simply use this project here. And let me show to you guys file open. You can use this project here to download, compile and download to your Arduino. And then you won't have to worry about the C code on Arduino. Uh, one second, please. Here we are. Um, here we are. So, we went from the very same code that comes with Arduino, and we added a little bit more code, like here, for example. You see? Here I'm testing if the first letter is digital or analog. So if the first letter is digital, you want to do a digital. Read or write? I don't know. Let's see. Let's check the second character. So if the second character is W, you want to do a digital write. If the second character is R, you want to do a digital read. So we have a couple of tests here that makes it possible for you to just compile this project here, upload it to your Arduino, and now you don't have to worry about the side, the Arduino side. You can just worry about your application side. And here is the code. It's fully available for download. Now you can just download it, compile, and upload to your board. And uh, we can uh, like do some things. Let me show you again here. So let's see the board here again. And let me open my quick time player again. So I'm going to close the lamp example. And let's say we want to play with the light sensor. You see, that's the value the light sensor is showing. I'm going to put my hand on top of it. You see the value is decreasing and the color is darker on my cell phone. Let me see, let me show you my cell phone here. See, you're seeing the very same information. And I can also turn on the light on my cell phone. And if I apply now the light, you see here the value is very, very high, but I can then use my hand to decrease it very fast. You see? So this is the kind of thing you can easily perform without having to worry about uh, any code in the Arduino side because we have provided to you guys this very simple block of code that you can just compile and upload to Arduino. Then if you get better and if you decide you can then uh, make it better or change this code as you want. Okay, hope you like it. Here you can find my email and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. On YouTube just search for Victor Fernandez. Uh, I have plenty of videos showing a lot of stuff there. And here you can find me on YouTube and Instagram. I'm open for questions and thank you all very much. Does Arduino support ADC and DAC units? Yes, yes, yes. You have uh, you have the possibility to work with that, uh, but you also have to remember that you have a eight bit microprocessor and it's working around uh, sixteen megahertz. So if you need something faster, then you th you should consider ARM at some point. In the, in, my, in the presentation, I showed my master degree project working with Parkinson. We started with one accelerometer, but the final project was supposed to have three accelerometers. And uh, we worked with ADC, and uh, 
the first accelerometer, Arduino was okay with it, but then when we started to work with Tree, it did not go so well, so we went to ARM, which was faster and could support all the three of them. Excellent. I remember you talking about some of those ARM devices you were working with. Is good. And when I mean, and when I mean that Arduino did not support the three accelerometers, I mean that I, for Parkinson disease, we needed uh, some uh, sample rate to be accomplished, and it could not accomplish the sample rate we needed. I mean, we could capture the signal, but not in the sample rate we needed. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Alf say asking, is good old RS-232 supported? Question mark. Yes, yes, yes. We have uh, one uh, port in pin one and two, if not, if I'm not wrong. And uh, well, in Italy, this same presentation was done in two hours, not only one hour. So I had uh, the opportunity to show a little bit more detailed information over that. And uh, actually, in my blog, you can find uh, the the link for the full presentation, the two-hour presentation, I will put my website here because it's not on the presentation. It's TKS Software slash Victory. So it's TKSSoftware.com slash Victory. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, great. Thanks for putting that. So, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, what is the resolution time for sampling? Could reading status of input ports um, be possible at an eighth of a second rate. Okay, just one second. Could reading status of input port possible at one? Yes, I think yes. Well, this is a hard question because it, it, it comes with some numbers. I'm not really sure about it, but yes, one eighth second is not that fast. And uh, well, I think yes, because it's not that, that fast. But uh, when it comes to higher resolutions, and uh, I mean not resolutions, but higher sample rates, then you may have a problem. The resolution itself, I think it's uh, two bytes. I'm not really sure right now, but I think it's two bytes of resolution. Okay. If it's not two, it's one. But I I have to check on that. The the analog sampling, well, the analog read is one byte, so it's most probably one byte, and I'm not sure if the mega, not the Arduino Uno, but if the mega uh, board has support to two bytes. That's one thing that, that's neat about the uh, that ecosystem is there is different uh, different boards you can choose from when you have different specific uh, scenarios that maybe one doesn't support. Like you're sharing the wearables yeah, and stuff like that. I'm trying to, to reply under the Arduino Uno board, the one I showed, but we actually have Arduino with support to 32 bits. So you can use your code, your original code, and uh, with some changes on it, you can go from 8 bits to 32 bits, and then you would have uh, higher resolutions and higher sampling rates. Excellent, yeah. Uh, how safe is the Arduino from uh, network surges or electrical surges? Uh, he's saying, for example, from lightning, but I know lightning will destroy everything. But <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, when working with something like that, you have to be very careful uh, with uh, voltage differences, right? I mean, uh, the lamp is working in 110 volts or 220, and your Arduino board most of it is expecting like 12 at most in the, in the power input. So uh, if you're not really careful with the wires, you can just uh, blow a few things. So <laughs> be careful. Yeah, that's yeah, re really important on that when you're doing that sort of thing. Good point. But it's not that expensive, right? Just make sure you, you are wearing glasses and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, is it possible for Arduino to encrypt or decrypt packages using AES? Yes, it is. Uh, you have to remember about speed, uh, but the answer is yes. You actually find a lot of uh, code from third parties that you can use, but uh, if you need fast communications, then it may take more time to, depending on the the protocol you decide to use, the, the code you decide to use, it may 
have some time to decrypt or encrypt. Uh, so yes, it is possible, but you have to consider that. Yeah, that's a good point. That's it. And yeah, it's a matter of considering where your bottlenecks are. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so your link to your blog post at tkssoftware.com slash victory. They can grab your uh, your full slides and stuff from there. So that's great to see. And Thank uh, you very much. Uh, I'm available on my email, on my YouTube channel. So if you guys have any doubts, any further things that I may be uh, I, I'm here to help. Okay. Thank you so much, Victory. You're a great guy. Appreciate you. Thank you. Joe. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye.